Breakfast Lounge near 90.3 FM We're here for the hashtag press play special Where we're unearthing the musical gems of North West Dublin Did you ever feel that you didn't belong? That you hit a brick wall And the peace you lost Is the peace you need to feel whole But it hurts so bad But I'm trying From my eyes And every time I see myself It's a different disguise In this crowd I see A different part of me The screens, mm. like the screens, the screens. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing yeah. to look at the house. Yeah. Did she physically make every piece herself? She did, yeah. She I mean, on later her. on, her work would be mass produced. Yeah, but, but she physically made the whole, yeah. So she would have made yeah, the, yeah. Of the models, and all this work here is that she made. Well, the funny thing about the kitchen in that house is that apparently she was a very, very bad cook. So the worst room in the house is the kitchen because she didn't quite know how to design the storage oh, there as well. Yeah. She's going to cook yeah. very yeah. I know that now. And the stuff that's on exhibition, where was it actually bought from or from who? It's been bought mostly from London, I think. There were private collectors as well. There's a black screen and if you go on a page, there's a red one as well. You went to see recent ads. See the Sons of Ulster. Oh, Martin Ford's Salmon. What is it like? It? Brilliant. Brilliant. Fabulous. And, and Oedipus last year. Oedipus, so. yeah. Some people feel like the Abbey is not for them when it's our national theatre, so it well, is we go with our group from Cabra and Finglas, and yeah. um, it's fantastic. I was going to say, Mary the tutor has a big stick, and she said she gives her belt. <laughs> the belt and a big stick if you don't come to her. I'm only joking. <laughs> We have a cup of coffee in the chat. Yeah. No it's not oily and great here, you have, is it? Oh! <laughs>
My ex-girl said she thinks a strangle in my throat Cause everything is a total joke to me And I'll never find the damsel are like a coat Picture a tramp trampling my hopes and dreams The smithereens on the one of a Jeffrey Campbell's look a roach I laugh, said I truly am thankful for your jokes then Tonight is about not assuming everything happens in a theatre or in a pub or in a venue or in a gig or in a dance studio But it actually can happen in a house in Carroll Get into this space and we'll have a bit of crack tonight It's a little pop-up gig and Monica's Mar- 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 gaff, you my joke I catch a flight cause it gotta be somewhere tranquil or remote With some palm trees, sun, sand, sea What a beautiful house this is the type of vibe me nanny used to have, you know, the Christmas candles lit and all. So I might adopt you as a nanny Monica if that's alright. Calling me the friend, there's only a half a look and no, and no, no management promotes more establishment. It was uh, always a scary thing, I managed to avoid it for 28 years, and here we are. This is my first Cabra gig ever. I never thought being Cabra West either, that's, that's, that's brilliant. All along it was meant to be. When you're gone, oh. when you're gone, maybe then you'll see. We had nothing to do, and something to prove. We and we were fools, something to do. So it's best when you knew girls says the my behavior's capricious. And everything I say is fictitious, and I make her suspicious. I told her to court and cater to her wishes. Gave her the grimace and hook, loin and sink. I know she's bait for the fishes. Time is money, and I'm made for my bridges. And I've been spending all my clock and major digits. Paying her visits for simple and plain. I'd rather be single than claim. I am not trying to rekindle that flame, but listen. Me and my boys off and kick it in a place where the plates are exquisite And talk business, we'll be waiting for the dishes I gave the weight on my flavor, the fill of steaks are delicious With caprinas like the fruits of a labor, the citrus I raise a toast when the plates are all finished Here's the Louis, she's a skip And the nature is vicious, but if you treat her look at this Just be careful, you don't make her malicious See me, I'll ride and make her the missus And that's that something new, not just in, in the exhibition, but also in the culture. When I was growing up, we always used to say, yeah. wash the dishes. Yeah. 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 And it was only, I think, when I maybe was talking to English people, less and they were like, Delph? What is that? Yeah. Yeah. I just used that term. Yeah. And it's interesting to see, oh, that's where it came from. Uh, well, it was my first time with the group, and uh, I have to say, I've walked into museums. And I've looked at all the things and I've said, oh yeah, they're really nice and they're lovely. But having Audrey brought everything really interesting into life and I really want to come again. <laughs> Which is terrific. It's lovely to be led through all this. So Myers, no connection to Ireland, probably never even been to Ireland, but because he gave a huge amount to, to the museum in London and they already had enough of it as they saw, they decided they'd offer it to us and we were only too delighted to take this particular mosque lamp. It's apparent uh, from the museum here, National Museum, and from also uh, Chester Beatty Library that um, a part of the Irish culture is to include other culture. So um, when I come here, uh, I think that um, I visit the whole world, not just Ireland. that we made in Cabra is 
is uh, a particular favourite uh, of mine, of all the work I've done over the years, because it evolved so organically. One of the things that I was interested in was exploring the idea of the poetic, the sacred, the mystic in the ordinary movement of people around in the streets. What was really interesting was we started talking about just the place names of where everybody lived and also the place names uh, of streets around the area where we were working in and started looking at what they meant. I see people and especially older people as being living libraries. They're, they're living libraries of experience and knowledge and ideas and beliefs and relationships. So just from what was in that room, we got this whole picture of this area, of being this area full of meaning, full of a sacred sense of itself. And that's what the, the piece is. That's what the piece is about. Because I think it's really important for everybody to reclaim the, the poetry of their own lives. My name is George Higgs and I'm a composer. I'm currently working with several groups, uh, one of which is the Finglas Adult Drama Group. They're a very lively group and a very creative group um, and very open-minded. I've been here about three or four weeks now and I'm trying to develop with the group a performance, a musical instrument that would involve the elements of sport and play. Um, we've been working on today working with Hermes to kind of create rhythms, um, kind of an, ana an analog to the haka. So basically we're just coming up with ideas together for music making with an element of sport. And sometime in early 2017, February, there are going to be a number of pop-up museums around this area I mentioned. And uh, in the pop-up museum we'll have bits of the instrument I'm referring to and maybe have a performance even at different times. Ideally, the instrument would have be interactive for the public to interact with. It's funny, when the first day I met with the group, I told them that our, we needed to be sort of focused on these two elements, sport and song, which to my mind when I first heard them, I have to admit, seemed kind of disparate. But we started talking about it, the more we talked and the more the groups 
spoke about these two elements, the more you realize how intertwined they were. In fact, the song is a kind of sport where, but you, instead of competing, often you're working together. So we spoke about how there is a, not necessarily a ludic, like a playful element, but there's a competitive side to song. So uh, we, we kind of realized together how connected they were, in fact. So that was good to know. My name is Phil Kingston, I'm the Community Education Manager here. People come to the Abbey and say, oh, I haven't been to the Abbey for ages, but it's your theatre. And when the Yates and Gregory decided they wanted a national theatre, they didn't have the right actors to act in their plays until Frank and Willie Fay came along with their group of amateur actors and they actually had a local acting group to act their plays and that's when the Abbey started. They gave voice to the National Theatre and that's kind of what we're going to be doing with this project. We're giving voice to it, but we're coming up with the, with the contemporary voices, the voices of here and now. And the voices that might often be heard in this building, we're going to bring them into this building and make sure they're heard. So, Frank and Woody Fay, they're going to be our guiding spirits and now we're all going to step onto the Abbey stage, so follow me. There you are, Frank. Here, yeah, Frank. Look, I've got a little something for you. Come here, Frank. There you are. There you are. Oh, man. Yo, nerves. That poor little lump in me throat. There's something at the heart of, uh, of, of uh, our civic responsibility. And, and that, if there's a place anywhere in, uh, on this island, it's here, it's this stage, which has historically dealt with these issues. And we genuinely want you to be a part of that conversation, whether that's on here or in there. And when I woke, all I could smell was my own fear. And all I could think of was how vast France was, with farmhouses, ruins and squadrons of men marching on every road, led by suspicious officers who turned their heads as they spied me. James was only four, but today would suddenly become the man in the family. He was too young to ever remember his big brother, John Della Fingless, aged 20 when shot. But they'll never be able to say that we're not sophisticated. I am no country plunky, like the big hippie norries out here. I'm already spent an hour up in my bedroom. Morning, Jamie. I'll force him if he came in while I drew the seams of my nylon stockings. We're doing a thing at the moment called Master Plan for the entire institution, the whole, all the sites. And that has been brought up, yeah, as in, what it, it, does the brand sell what's actually here? Now, I personally think a national museum is, is fine because it means that it's the, you know, stop all national cultural institution and it means everything. It means even though it, it's of the country, so therefore that's why national is put in the title. But if you call it International Museum of Ireland, it gives the impression that it's anything but Ireland. So it's a hard one, it's a very tricky one. We are obsessed with our own culture and our own country, but that's fair enough. I mean, 
our language was practically annihilated. So what we have left, we want to hold on to. So we get that. But in this, this day and age, when um, Irish people are from various different walks of life and um, different ancestry, it should be a lot broader than that. You know, it's about that. It's about just telling everyone that if you if you set your mind on something and you do it the right way, you can do it. Or you can be an artist. You can see something. And you're like, oh my God, it's the most stunningly beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. And I, I'd love to do something like that. I'd love to create that impression in somebody else. You know, I think this place in particular leaves that kind of wonder in people when they look at how the beauty of things. There's so many beautiful objects here. I think a lot of it is like literally that word inspire. If you can inspire a, a young boy or girl to, to, do, to do a completely different career to what they might have actually had in their heads that they could suddenly realised, well, if I wanted to be that, if I want to be an archaeologist or I want to be a um, history teacher or whatever it happens to be, if I you know, take the same route in life, it's all, everything's possible. I think it's brilliant. It's making people so aware, people who wouldn't have known, you know, stuff that was going on. And I think it's fabulous. The whole revival of the arts and the, you know, I think it's brilliant. Yeah, keep it going. I've been to two, and I think I think it's great. I think it's a great way to learn. I took a little bit very interesting because uh, I learn I learn about different kind of cultures in especially Irish cultures and different kind of people and join together. The clothes exhibition I thought was fabulous. Yeah. And the comparisons you make with then and now it's, it's just unbelievable. This is my very helpful to me because you know I learning English and uh, yeah. meet like the friends TV. also.